Hello all. In this particular tutorial, we will learn how to restore an Oracle database from one server to another server. The method that is used here is rman backup and restore and this particular tutorial is done on Oracle 19, Oracle database 19c running on Red Hat Enterprise 7.8. The steps mentioned here will work for Oracle 21c uh, as well as Oracle 12c. So the everything will work as seamlessly as possible. In this particular method, you do not need the connection, active connection to the source database because we will be using the backups. All that you need is just the backups. If you do not have the backup, neither you have the source database and you have a requirement to restore this particular database, then only God can save you because without backup, without the source database present, you cannot restore your database. The As I mentioned, the we, we only thing that we need is the backups. We do not need the source connection to the, the, the connection to the source database, which means we do not need to configure any TNS names entry or anything such like that because all that we need is just the backup and restore. So once you have the backup from your source database, you can you do not need to be connected to your source database. You can shut down your source database if it is not required or you can just ignore it. That's perfectly fine. The, the steps involved in this particular method is we will be taking the RMAN backup. We will be transferring the backup to the target server. If there is no P file, we'll create the P file and we'll transfer the P file. We will also transfer the password file on target server. So once you have completed these four steps, the backup of the backup and transfer the backup P file and password file, you can safely log off from your source server. You do not have any more work on your source server. On your target server, we will be opening the database in no mount mode using the P file that we received from your source server. We'll be restoring the control file. We'll be cataloging the RMAN backup files. If the RMAN backup on the source server and on your target server does not match, then the location, the control file will point to one location where your backup files will not be there. So we have to catalog the RMAN backup files. We'll be restoring the database. We'll be recovering the database and we'll be opening the database in reset logs mode. Also, there might be a situation where the database name on your target server or may be different from your source server that you might have it as a development server or any other name. So we will also learn how to change the database name using an ID. There might be a requirement of actually restoring your database to a different location. I will also show you how to restore your database to a different location if the mount points on your source server do not match to the mount points on your target server. So let's get on with our exercise. So I have got two servers. The, this is the DB1. This is DB2. As you can see, the host name of this is let's. So this host name of this is DB1 and host name of this is DB2. This is DB1 is my source server. DB2 is my target server. If you see here PS minus EF grep pmon, you can see that there is a database called Aura19 that we will be restoring to DB2. And if I run the same command, you can see that absolutely no database running on DB2. And if I run cat etc Aura tab, it's completely empty. There is no entry in etc Aura tab, which means I do not have any database on my target server. So we have some work to be done on the source server. So let's connect two sessions to the source servers with no need of having a target server connection because we have to take a backup, etc, etc. So let's clear the screen. Let's set the environmental variable. That's good. Let me connect to the database. And what we will be doing is we will create an table called employee. We'll create one table called employee. We will just create this particular table. So that's done. We will insert one record into employee. The first record that's rock. We have the first record employee in our database called rock. That's done. We will verify that we have that particular record. So that's good. So we have one record in our table called one employee in our table called one rock, the ID one with a rock. So that's all good. So we 
why I have created that when we restore, we will verify that this particular table is also present in our target server. Let's let's set our environmental variable, which is already done. Let's connect to our R main session. Let's verify if we have any backups. So let's do list backup. Let's see if we have any backups. And looks like we do not have any backups. So fine. So that means we will be taking the fresh backup. Let's do show all to figure out where our backups will go. So the default channel is configured to be at this location. So let me, I have already opened another session. So let me go to that particular location. So CD this particular location that particular location does not exist which means our backup would have failed so let's create that particular location so the permission denied that's fine so sudo ch mode 777 db i'm giving the 777 on the main directory so now i should be able to create so i've created a directory for the backups so that's all good now what we are going to do is we are going to take the backup from our R main server. So let's do post clear screen. And before taking the backup, I'll show you what how you can take the backup. You can take the backup using backup database only. If you just take the backup database, then you have to take the archive log backup. So you can first run backup database and then you can take the backup archive log. You can also take backup database plus archive log. So in a single command, you will be able to take the database backup plus archive log. You can also run another command backup incremental level zero database. If you run this particular command, you will be taking the level zero backup. If you want to take the in archive log backup along with the incremental level zero, then you will be adding the keyword plus archive log. So you will say backup incremental level zero database plus archive log. And if you are just taking the backup incremental level zero database, then after that you can take. So whatever combination is fine, whatever job you want to set up, you can set up. I will be taking the backup in this particular look scenario. I'll be taking using this particular command. So I'll be taking the level zero plus archive log. So let's do that. Let me run that particular command. Before running that particular command, I will go to this particular location that we just created. And let's verify if we have any backups and we do not have any backups so that's all good so let's run this particular command and if i now run ls minus l you can see the backup file has came if i show you the date that's june 22 12 24 and exactly at that point in time the backup file has arrived so the backup is going to take some time let me pause the video and come back once the backup is completed so as you can see the backup is completed we have got the control file and sp file auto backup also so let's now go to this particular location and run ls minus l and you can see all of these particular backup files are present we got this is the auto backup of your control file and sp file so that's all good now what we are going to do is we will we will exit so let's if we want to verify the backup so you can verify using the using the list backup command and we should be able to see all of this backup information previously when i ran the list backup it did not give me any output that was no backup information <coughs> so if i run list backup now you should be able to see all the backup information so let's exit from our main session so we have taken our backup backups now the thing is we need to transfer these backup files the p file and or our password file so let's go to Let's set the environmental variable, which is already set, but no harm. Let's go to the Oracle home slash DBS. Let's verify if we have the init file and looks like we do not have the init file. So let's create one. So let's connect. Let's connect to the database as sysdba create p file from sp file. That's file created. That's good. Let's exit. Let's clear let's run the ls minus l init command and you can see we have got init aura 19 dot aura file that's good let's verify if we have a password file so aura pw and yes we have the password file so we have to transfer this particular files on our destination server so let's connect to the destination server before before actually before actually setting up uh, i i need to go to so let's my oracle home is already set 
So let's go to that. So what, I, what we can do if it is not set, create a dummy entry in ATC or our tab for the database that you are going to restore. So the database that we are going to restore is Aura 19. Let's create one dummy entry in the, this particular, the Oracle home. I remember my Oracle home. If you do not know, you can find out what's your Oracle home. So V19 database, let's create one dummy entry. That's done. Let's set the Oracle environmental variable to that entry. Let's go to Oracle home slash dbs let's figure out if we have any files and we do not have any files in this particular location so now what we'll do is we will take this particular location and we will come to our source server and we will transfer the init aura file and aura password file to the db2 and to this particular location so that's all we are going to do so let's do that and both the files transferred so let's verify now ls minus l and we can see in it or our file and or our password file we have received those files on our source a target server where we want to restore our database the db2 server let's let's now transfer the backup file the backup file make sure that we have a backup directory present let's go to Let's if it is not already there. Let's try to create one. So let's run this particular command. Let's see if it's if it is already there, it will fail. So it was not there. So the backup directory is created. Let's transfer the backup files from our source server to the target server. So let's go to it's I'm already there in that particular location. So this is where the backups are taken. So let's transfer the backup. So SCP star to DB2 give the location where you want to transfer your backup files. So the backup files have started transferring. So let's go to that particular location. LS minus L, you can see almost all the files have been transferred successfully. So we got our backup files. Now that we have transferred the init or our file, we have transferred the password file and we have transferred the backup files. So init, the P file, password file and backup files we do not have any more work to be done on our source server. So we can safely log off from our source server. We do not have any more work on our source server. So I've done logged off and what I'll do is I will open two sessions to my target server. So let's that I have done that. So now what we are going to do is we have to we first thing that we have to do is create an entry in aura tab, which I have already done to before. To set the environmental variable i have done that so that's good the next part is we we just for safety will verify that we have received our p file and password file the pa uh, init file and password file and yes we have received them that's good we can now we will create some of the necessary directories where we are going to restore our database so this is the location where our source database. So I am going to restore it in the exactly same location. However, at a later point in time, I will show you if you want to restore it in a different location, how to do that. So I'm going to restore it in the exactly same location. So I'll create the directory structure exactly similar to my source server. So let's do that. So And that's all done. We created the directories. We have to start your database in no mount mode. So using this particular P file that we have now, remember that we do not have any SP file or anything like that. So if I just say startup no mount, it's going to use this P file or what we can do is we can, when we start up your database in no mount mode, we can specify the entire location of P file. Both is fine. Either just a startup no mount or you can specify the entire location of P file as well. Let's do that. So let's set the environmental variable that's good let's let's go uh, let's verify the location that's the location of our init file this is where our init file is there so sql plus as sysdba we have to start our database in no mount mode so let's say startup no mount this will perfectly work because as i mentioned there is no sp file so it's going to use that particular p file the only p file present However, if you want to specify the p file, you can do something like this. So you can say startup no mount p file is equal to give the complete location. If you are already in that directory, you don't have to give the complete location. However, it is always better to give the complete location if you are in a separate directory in it aura19.aura. 
if so it cannot open this particular file so i okay i made a mistake i did not say p so this just aura 19 dot or i missed the t so that's why i got this error so now our database is starting in no mount mode so once the database is started in no mount mode what we are going to do is we are going to restore our control file so let's do that so let's exit let's connect to the rman session rman target before restoring the control file let's do something let's find where our control file is going to get restored so let's say grep minus i control so let's look at this particular location so let's go to this particular location in the other session so clear cd and ls minus l you can see it's completely empty this is where i have set the control file location aura 19 control 01 and control 02 so when <coughs> sorry when i run the rman restore control file command is going to restore it in this location which is currently empty so let's connect to the rman session rman target and what we have to do is first thing is we have to restore the control file but before restoring the control file let's connect another session let's we need to know the name of the control file because we have to replace in this command in this command we have to replace the name of the control file so let's take that let's put it in a notepad let's go to this particular location where we transferred our backup so cd oh i did not copy maybe control c cd this particular location clear ls minus l and this is the control file because it says c this is the how i gave the format so this is the control file let's take that particular name put it here and take it here and before doing that let's show i'll show you ls minus l is completely empty i'm going to restore the control file so let's done and if and you can see output file name it's as come finish the restore let's go here do ls minus l and you can see the control files are restored so the first thing that we did is restoring the control file the next part that we have to do is we have to now start our database in mount mode so let's once your control file is restored we started the database in the mount no mount mode now we have to start our database in mount mode so because we have restored our control file so alter database mount so if if everything is good our database will be started in mount mode once we have started our database in mount mode we have to do some exercise let's verify whether the backups are all present so let's do the cross check backup and it says it's all backups are found to be available which means i do not need to delete and catalog the backups because all the backups that we ha had on our source server they are present in our target server so which is good news so i do not need to do this but however if you want to do this you can still do it so let's do that and it's not going to do because there is no expired backup it's not going to do anything and if i want to catalog the backups if i want to catalog any backups you can run that particular command however that's also not going to do anything let's do that so let's run this particular command because all the backups are present so it's not going to catalog any files so you can you can see that list of okay so only one control file it has cataloged which is good so apart from that it has not cataloged anything so that's all good so we have now successfully have the information about the backup information of our the rman backup location in our control file so that's all good so we are at the state now that our database is in mount mode the control file is restored the backups are cataloged that's all good so we are at the state step where we can restore our database so let's run the restore database so let's do that what i can do is i can create a run block and run this all together so let's let we can do that as well or we can run the commands one by one so let's run one by one so let's say the restore database so if we are now go to this particular location ls minus l you can see we had only control files and now we got the sysoc system undo and users files as well in this particular location so the restore has started so the restore is going to take some time so let me pause the video and come back it's 12:38 in my watch 
you it will take maybe a minute or so it's not going to take a lot of time for the restore to happen so by 12 39 i should be back so i'll pause the video and come okay that's done while i was talking it's done so the restore is done so the next part is the recover database let's do that so i have started the recover as well that is a media recovery error that's fine it's looking for the extra archive logs so that's all good so now what we are going to do is i'm going to exit from my rman session connect to my database sql plus as sysdba and now the database will not be open so let's say alter database open reset logs and we will verify if our database is opening if our database is opening successfully that means the restore is completed which is good database altered successfully let's say post clear let's say select name comma open mode from v dollar database that's all good so we have order 19 read right and let's verify whether our table that employee table is present and if we have a record called one rock and that's also appeared which means we have successfully restored our database and all the tables which were present in our source database got restored now the database name that we restored on our target server it is exactly similar to your production server and there might be a need that the database name on the source on the target server is different then your source server this might be a development database or any other database and you do not want the same database name what should you do you have an utility called nid you have an utility called nid which will allow you to rename your database the command for that is the command for that particular is the nid target whichever database you want to restore you will connect to that database as target you will give the new name to that i'm renaming my aura 90 days aura 22 you can rename it any name that you are comfortable or you want in your system you can rename it and set name is equal to y but before renaming this we need to make sure our database is in no mod mode so let's do that so let's shut the database and let's start up the database in no mod mode so let's do that shut immediate and start up Sorry, it should be in mount mode not no mount mode sorry my mistake it should be in the mount mode not no mount mode so the database should be in mount mode when we are going to use the nid so let's wait i have run both the commands so it's going to shut the database it's going to shut down the database and it's going to start the database in mount modes give it a minute for it to happen so that's done the first command is done and it has started the database in mount mode let me exit let me clear and let's set the environmental variable once again it is already set let's clear the screen and let's run this particular command nid i'm changing my database name i'm changing my database name from aura 19 to aura 22 so let's do that so it says that change database name from aura 19 to aura 22 i'll say yes we have to say yes and it's going to rename the database give it a minute for it to happen it's not going to take a lot of time is because all that it does is it updates the information in the headers and the control file that's all it does so give it a minute and just maybe another two three seconds it should be done one two three not done okay that's done so the database name changed to aura 22 db new id completed successfully so that's all good now what we are going to do we are now we have the init file with the old name let me copy that particular init file with a new name because we have renamed the database so let's do that and only one change that we have to do in this particular file is we have to modify the name of the database that's all the db name that's all we have to do so let me do that that's done i have changed the database name this is the only change that i have to do also i'll create the password file i can move this particular password file or i can create a copy whatever is comfortable with you our old database is not there so we can safely get rid of old files we do not need those old files so let's do that so let's done if i now show you ls minus l i do not have this old 
database as well i can get rid of that file as well so that's all good so ls minus l we have the init aura 22 and aura password 22 let's set the environmental variable export oracle sid to aura 22 that's good sql plus as sysdba startup and if our rename is all good if our p file is all good then we should be able to start our database so let's give it a minute startup let's wait for this to work database mounted database open that's good news so let's clear the screen host clear and let's say select name comma open mode from v dollar database and you can see the database name is now aura 22 it's no longer aura 19 we when we restore this particular database it was restored as aura 22 and let's verify if our table called employee is still present in this particular database and yes we have that particular table so we have successfully restored the database and we have renamed that particular database to a different name on a different server that's all good now i also mentioned that there might be a requirement for you to restore the database to a different location so if you wanted to restore a database to a different location when you did the restore database before doing the restore database you can do the set new name for database to the new location new mount point you can also give the set new name for all the data files etc manually however if you want to if you have multiple locations and some data files are going to one location another location you can give the name of the data files or if you have all the data files on a one location you can say set new name for database to new location set new name for temp file to new location then you can do the restore database and then you will be doing the switch data file all and switch time file all so this is the method if you want to restore your database to a different location you will be using this particular run block to restore your database to a different location i hope you found this particular tutorial useful in this particular tutorial we learned how to restore your database from one server to another server when we restored our database that time we do not need to have the connection if your source database is destroyed if you only thing that you have is the backup that is perfectly fine using those backups we will be able to duplicate or restore your database from one server to another server we can also use this particular method to restore it on the same server as well it's not mandatory that we have to restore it on another server if you want we can restore on the same server if your source database is deleted or crashed etc i hope you found this particular tutorial useful thank you for watching and see you in next tutorial and one more thing if you like the videos that i'm uploading if you like the content that i'm uploading please do subscribe to my channel and hit the like button thank you for watching and see you in next tutorial bye bye